let me ask you some questions. Does God want you to talk gently with your husband about the benefits of seeing a trained counselor to deal with unresolved wounds from childhood? Could that be something that God would want you to do, to talk to your husband about seeing a trained counselor? Does God want you to lovingly brainstorm with your husband about ways to reduce his stress? That might be helpful, right? Just brainstorm. What could we do to take some load off of you? Do you need to change jobs? You mean, I'm worried about you. I'm worried about our relationship because this is getting out of control. What do we need to do to lower your stress level? Does God want you to reassure your husband that you are for him and you want to help him explore the fears that tend to be displayed as anger? So maybe you want to come alongside your husband and explore the fears that get displayed as anger. Does God want you to gently suggest that your husband may benefit from a 12-step program? And there are so many 12-step programs now out there. But beyond being compassionate, again, I just feel like I need to say this 20 times, it is not okay for your husband or boyfriend or fiance or anyone to abuse you, to try to excessively control you, to have you know, rage outbursts toward you. Not okay, not okay. Uh, and it's not okay with God. I wanted to give you some biblical references for that. In Colossians 3, 8, God says, you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. So right there, pretty clear, God says this is not okay. But if you need more, God specifically tells husbands to be considerate toward their wives. It would be Colossians 3, 19. It says, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. There you go. So God says, clearly, it is not okay for your husband to rage against you, try to excessively control you, uh, verbally abuse you, emotionally abuse you, let alone physically abuse you. What, category, or what behavior falls in the category of emotional or verbal abuse? Calling obscene names, which so many women tolerate, so many women tolerate this. It is not okay. I'm just going to say this. It is not okay at all for your husband to call you vulgar names or really any derogatory name. That is not okay. If Raul did that one time, that would be the last time he said that because I would be drawing the line. Not acceptable. Okay. Yelling in rage, a pattern of constantly criticizing you and putting you down prolonged periods of refusing to talk to you at all, like pretending you don't exist. That is very emotionally abusive, to pretend you don't exist. You know, they, they walk by, you're talking, and they pretend they don't hear you, and this goes on and on and on, like just pretending you're invisible. Um, a pattern of ridicule, ridiculing you or making fun of you. A pattern of mocking you or mean-spirited sarcasm. And we're talking about a pattern here, right? It's not just like one sarcastic remark. It's this pattern of on and on, this like mean-spirited sarcasm. Verbal threats of violence. In trying to intimidate you through things like displaying a gun or displaying knives. Constantly accusing you of wrongdoing. Just constantly accusing you of wrongdoing. Forbidding you to talk to your parents or your siblings. Preventing you from leaving the house. Really, that can cross over into what I would call physical abuse, too, because it's, it's like preventing you from physically being able to move about. Um, refusing to allow you to talk on the phone. Forbidding you from speaking to friends or neighbors. Again, totally designed to control you. And I thought, okay, this is where the Christian woman says, but aren't we supposed to submit to our husbands? So isn't he supposed to kind of like be in control of me? Okay, so I had to ponder this with God. Like, okay, where is the line? How does this work? We're supposed to submit to our husbands. We all know that, right? But when does it become excessively controlling? And as I prayed about this, this is what I believe God laid on my heart. Here is the difference. You need to be able to be in charge of you and your personal life. You need to be in charge of you and your personal life. And you will eventually answer to God as an individual, right? Romans 14 says, so then each of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. Each of us will give an account to God individually. However, 
A wife is supposed to submit to her husband in the sense of showing him respect and allowing him to lead the family in terms of you know major decisions for the family, that kind of thing, as long as he's not leading in a way that is sinful or destructive. Colossians 3.18 is a great verse. It has two parts to that verse. It says, wives must, must submit themselves to their husbands as is fitting in the Lord. So if your husband is leading in a direction that is not fitting in the Lord, you're not, you don't have to submit to that. 